Hello, I'm Barry Ann Moore, Dean of the College of Atmospheric and Geographic Sciences, Director of the National Weather Center and Vice President for Weather and Climate Programs here at OU. One of the extraordinary things uh, is that we can actually see the human perturbation of the natural cycle of carbon dioxide as it really, as the Bible says, it goes from a dust to dust. From inorganic carbon, carbon dioxide, incorporated into living tissue through the process of photosynthesis, works its way up the food chain. It's part of you, it's part of me. And then it will slowly work its way back down the food chain and go from inorganic up to organic and then back to inorganic. It is a very natural cycle. It is the signature of a living planet, as I said. So what do we see about the carbon cycle? Well, first of all, there's some very large numbers. Biosphere, the terrestrial biosphere, exchanges about 100 billion metric tons carbon as CO2 through the process of photosynthesis and respiration. The oceans, interestingly enough, exchange about 100 billion metric tons through the process of CO2 being absorbed into the ocean due to the difference in partial pressure, particularly in the cold ocean where solubility of CO2 is greater, and then in the warm ocean where you have upwelling, carbon-rich waters coming back up to the surface, there's an outgassing. So 100 billion metric tons of carbon as CO2 are exchanged between the biosphere and the oceans. And what do the humans contribute? About 10. So humans are essentially adding about 10 billion tons per year, every year. All of those numbers were per year numbers. So you might even say, well, how well do we know those numbers? Uh, we probably don't know them within 10, 15%. So then you could argue, well, then you couldn't possibly see the human perturbation. And that's not true. We have very careful measurements that began in the late 50s. Every single day, second highest mountain in Hawaii at Mauna Loa. Every single day since the late 50s, we've been measuring carbon dioxide. And we can see the steady increase. In fact, we can go further back into time by using ice cores and small parts of the atmosphere that were trapped when the snow fell. And we can now go back and catch those bubbles. Uh, we find that CO2 has increased in the atmosphere since the Industrial Revolution in the late 18th century. It's increased by a little over 40%. So we've gone from roughly 280 parts per million. That's a concentration. Parts per million. So CO2 makes up about 280 parts per million in the atmosphere in the pre-industrial times. And now we have over 400. And that is essentially a signature of the Industrial Revolution. It's not that the Industrial Revolution is bad or good. It's by and large been good. Uh, it's just somewhat unfortunate that uh, carbon dioxide is greenhouse gas. It's not a pollutant in a traditional sense, but it does pose a real change to the planet. And that is one of the things we'll be talking about throughout this course.